How the media twists and turns every player's word on when they need a new contract and when they're going someplace and if it's seeking a trade or requesting a trade or whatever the case may be with that. And Hassan Reddick spent a lot of news the last couple days regarding it. I want to go over all the new news regarding um, Hassan Reddick and the rumors regarding his trade request out of Philadelphia. And a lot has come up, even a trade rumor from yesterday. So... Let's get into it. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. People need to relax on certain aspects of this Hassan Reddick situation. Okay. Hassan Reddick never requested a trade. He seeked permission. Okay, he asked permission of the Philadelphia Eagles to go out there and get a better number for himself to see what his self-worth is. Okay, I think it's hard. To, it, a lot of media guys like to turn this whole thing around and say, oh, he requested a trade. He wants to be traded, and that's what he wants, and he wants to be out of Philadelphia. And that's not the case. And some new news that came up today, there were some trade rumors the other day. I want to go over all of that. Um, you know, it, it's hard for me to let go of, you know, your best pass rusher, okay? Whether he fits in Vic Fangio's scheme or not, if there's one guy I trust in that scheme, it's going to be Hassan Reddick because he has been an outside linebacker. He, is, he has tried it. He has done it. He has done it this year. But obviously, the schemes were flawed and, and the positions were flawed because the scheme was over the players and no adjustments were made. And obviously, you had coordinators that had no idea what they were doing. Obviously, from Sean the side and Matt Patricia. Okay, now there were some tweets that came out uh, regarding, uh, apparently uh, some reporters did talk, um, you know, to Hassan Reddick about the situation and all the rumors that have been coming out. Uh, the first one was, uh, just spoke to all pro pass rusher Hassan Reddick, who tells me he never requested a trade uh, and he wants to stay in Philadelphia. Quote, unquote, I would like to get an extension done here at home at no point that I ever tell the organization I want to be traded. Reddick has one year left in his deal with no guarantee money left. And this is what he said. He said, this is home for me. I was born and raised here. Two of the most fun years playing football in my life came here. I've cherished being an Eagle. Okay, that's a lot. That's that's, that's a lot of good things to say right there. Um, he seeked permission. Okay, he didn't just say behind the scenes to his agent, I requested a trade, and he just let all that dirty laundry go out on the media on the internet like that okay those are two different things if he requested a trade okay he really wants out if he got permission from the eagles to go out and he didn't have to do that you know he didn't have to do any of that uh which is interesting you know what i mean so it, it, it they word it that way to make you believe that he wants out of Philadelphia. Says the Eagles aware that Hassan Reddick has one year left on his contract, needs a new deal, informed his camp that they could explore trade options if they want to. Multiple sources told Bleacher Report that's where things stand with context from both sides. And that's perfectly fine because at the end of the day, he wants to just he wants to know for himself what number he deserves. Okay. This could have just been his agent. Um, not necessarily from Hassan Reddick's mouth, but his agent going out there. The agent looks out for the player, okay? The agent does things for the player behind the scenes, okay? Um, not that Hassan Reddick has let his agent do this, but his agent is going to do his job and say, look, like, you have one year left on your deal in, in Philly. I'm going to help you try to get the best deal possible. Let's just see what's out there. Get that number from that team. And just getting the number, it doesn't precisely mean that Hassan Reddick is going to go to that team that they get a certain number from. If they talk to a bunch of teams that have interest, come up with a similar number, he goes back to the Philadelphia Eagles and says, hey, you know, this is what teams want to pay me. Can we match that? And the Eagles will say, you know what? We might not be able to match it, but let's kind of meet in the middle. And I think, I don't think Reddick is going to get what he wants. He might not be, you know, he's not, you know, 27, 28 years old. You know what I mean? He's going to be turning 30 years old, okay, um, in September. By the season starting, he will be 30. Um, you know, and I understand, like, I think Reddick could still be here for another few years. I think he's got a lot left in the tank. I don't think his play has declined. Obviously, he's had... 
double-digit sack seasons with the Eagles and before he got here, which a lot of players can't do. Yes, we know he's very streaky during the season. Sometimes one month he'll have no sacks, and then another month he'll have six you know, so it just happens like that sometimes with him and his play. But in Vic Fangio's system, I think he'll work out really well. Um, you know, but it's it's tough because like I understand if he requested a trade or if the Eagles weren't going to pay him, I understand why they weren't going to do it because yes, they need to get younger there. Um, you know, but you're already losing Brandon Graham. Nolan Smith hasn't produced yet, and there's nothing, you know, promising right now from how the evaluation of how the Eagles evaluated their players. I don't know how they even, tra how do you take an evaluated year? Like you had this past year with such the most dysfunctional coaching staff I have seen in a while, um, getting little to no production, uh, production, setting these players up for failure pretty much. And, um, you know, and trying to make a move like this. Yeah. It would be stupid uh, enough for them to get rid of Reddick, but I would understand why they're doing it. But it's not like Nolan Smith had six to ten sacks this year where I could say, okay, we had we can afford to let go of Reddick because Nolan Smith is up and coming and he's he had a great year. I can't say that. You're losing two defensive ends and Josh Wett's on the last year of his contract. So if this trade goes down, well, and it could, it's not impossible that it can't go down. You know, uh, you know, it could happen. But look, I mean, there was, I mean, even Hassan Reddick tweeted himself and was like, never asked for a trade. However, I do understand it's a business preparing for whatever's next. Okay. Um, but it doesn't mean he's going to leave. I, he doesn't want to leave from what I'm, when I know what I'm hearing from other people, he doesn't want to leave Philadelphia at all, but the number is the number he's getting. He's the 18th highest paid defensive end double digit sacks. No one's putting numbers up like that. He shouldn't, he should be a top five, uh, top five, top six paid right now. And he's an 18th best. Um, you know, and I understand it from his perspective. I have nothing against this on Reddick wanting more money. I mean, double digit sacks, two seasons in a row with the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes. He took a pay cut when he got here. We we're lucky to have us on Reddick. He came here for a lot less money. Okay. We, I think we all know this, um, you know, but you know, from what the production he puts in, it's hard to turn away from it. I mean, there was even news the other day, which this could actually be real, but there was news that the Atlanta Falcons uh, started to have interest. That you now his Reddick's agent is talking to teams now, so I, apparently the Atlanta the Atlanta Falcons have um, you know they don't have any edge rushes right now, which makes sense. They have three day two picks, which makes sense, you know. And you know we talked about you know. Uh, Terrell and, and trading for cornerback Terrell or AJ Terrell, or maybe they, you know, go after Kyle Pitts or, you know, there's always like, you know, we always talk about names from teams, you know, potentially what the Eagles can get in return, not only uh, a pick, but a player, um, you know, that maybe the Falcons are starting to turn away from that could really help another team or something. So there was always, there was always some other, other things going on. Okay. Um, you know, you're, you're going to hear rumors like this all the time when it comes to teams that might have interest. There's, uh, there's no, there, I know there's no doubt in my mind right now that Hassan Reddick's agent has talked to other teams as of right now, but he requested permission from the Eagles to seek, you know, going out there and looking at numbers and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Requesting a trade. Yeah. That's saying I want out of Philly and I'm done. I think they, they obviously twisted his words around. This wasn't the case, which the media always does that, especially Philadelphia Eagles media is the worst when it comes to news in general. Um, you know what I mean? So from what I can see, I feel like there is a good chance he will be back. He might not get the number. If he gets the number from another team, he's not going to automatically go there. Okay. I don't think he'll do that because I still feel like he wants to play at home where he belongs. Um, you extend Hassan Reddick, the numbers are 11.8 to 11.9 million with an extension. It's a lot of, ca a lot of cap savings, which will get you to $30 million. So I ended up getting the numbers wrong. I, I don't know why over the cap says 20 plus million dollars, 28 plus it's a little bit over 20, 21 million. Um, so with this move, I mean, you're going to have over $30 million in cap space. Okay. I mean, um, $21 million cap hit for, Hassan Reddick as of right now okay and the Eagles are not going to keep him at that number with one more year left okay Kevin Byard gets cut post June that's 14 million dollars and I'd rather keep Reddick than keep Kevin Byard because they need to get younger at a lot of other positions 
um, you know, as of now. So um, the, there's going to be a lot of rank news going forward and other players. But when it comes to Hassan Reddick, he deserves the money he's going to get. But I think Hassan Reddick is going to go. I think Hassan Reddick will still get a big pay raise. But OK, I think Reddick will get a pay raise. But I feel like the Eagles will meet him in the middle with a specific number. Um, you know, I mean, the Eagles feel like they have a grasp on the market where they have Hassan Reddick. Um, you know, right now, obviously, because he's cheap right now and they want to keep him at that. And I, they might have a number in mind that, um, maybe Reddick was not satisfied with. And he says, you know what, let, if you don't mind, let me go out and just see, you know, what my worth is, what my market is as of right now, he gets that number and says, Hey, what can you do with this number? Can we reach that? Or can we kind of meet in between? So the Eagles can, you know, I feel like something will get done, but you never know what could happen. I feel like this is going towards like, he's just going to go out there, find his number, come back and boom. I, I feel like a, a deal from what it sounds like. I feel like a deal will get done with the Eagles. And I really think he wants to stay home and to say that he's played the two best years of his career in Philadelphia, that says a lot going into the off season. So I have pretty high expectations. I'm, I'm pretty confident he will be back. And like I said, if he's not, I'm not going to be really mad over it. But at the same time, it sucks because you lose your best pass rusher. But you never know what happens if Reddick's gone. You don't know what could happen. You don't know if they'll sign somebody else. But you have to think about this too, because Devontae Smith has to get paid. Land Dickerson has to get paid. Uh, you got some contracts looming right now. And, you know, they have to watch out for that as well. As much as they could save over $40 million this offseason, I mean, they could have over $40 million in cap space. I, I mean, and plus more. Avante Maddox post June 7.1. Goddard, to, to, over $2 million on the on a, on, a, on a restructure. I mean, there's there's a 1.8 for Jake Elliott on a restructure. There's a whole bunch of moves they can make that, that can well get them into a lot of cap space this this year and really make some good moves, especially to the defensive side of the ball. But hey, if they're able to keep Redick and they're going to add more to the defense, then I'm fine. You still save a lot of money with Hassan Redick. Obviously, with the trade, and I mean, regardless, I think they could save over $11 million, But with a move like this to re-sign him and extend him, yeah, 11.8, 11 11.9 11 is a pretty good number to save. And, you know, I, I think he wants to stay here. So, regardless of what you think, um, yes, this is a third, a soon-to-be 30-year-old defensive end. And I don't think he's dropped off in value. I don't think... Trust me, if I felt like Hassan Reddick has dropped off in production, I would say, you know what, I don't think it's smart enough to give him a big contract. But you know what, it's not even really the sack numbers, but I know he could play. I know he could still play at a high level. And if it's like a three-year deal, then great. Like, I'm perfectly fine with that. I think he'll be great for us for the next few years. And you know what, you don't have to worry about that position. But obviously, you have to add to that position going into this offseason. I think they still need another edge rusher. And Fangio loves his edge rushers. And, um, you know, you're, if it's the 3-4 scheme, you're going to want more coverage guys. You're going to want guys that are more athletic and, um, you know, that are tackling monsters. And, that, and that's what you want out of some of these guys. But um, I know a lot of people are saying, well, I don't think he's going to work for Vic Fangio's scheme because look what he did this past year. But you know what? Can't look at it. You can't look at it that way because Vic Fangio knows how to put guys in the right positions to win football games. He knows how to use players to their strengths, unlike this these other fucking assholes that we have running this defense that have no idea what they're doing, not playing Nolan Smith, not blitzing, not running stunts, not using your linebackers, not 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 looking fearful at all. Uh, to other offenses, you know, around the league. So um, I think this is going to, this is going to become good news down the road, whether you agree with it or not. I think a lot of fans are kind of upset that he's going to get traded, um, but it doesn't sound like it. Sounds like there's a chance for him to come back and, um, you know, we'll see what happens, you know, anything can happen down the road, but at the end of the day, if they trade him, they got to get something big in return. I mean, whether he's going to go into his thirties or not, He's, they have to get a day two pick out of him, 100% a day two pick. And I would like a second round pick for him and a player and a player on top of it. I'm not even kidding uh, because he's got a lot of value. And I think he'll walk into another roster and help them immediately. Okay. And, you know, it's a big loss for the Eagles if, if he gets traded. But, um, you know, yeah, you're depleted. Once you lose Reddick, man, you have to sign some athletic dudes. You, you got to go out and, and sign somebody on a lesser 
type contract that's still a high profile player and they can get a, a little bit more than a mid-tier guy uh in this offseason if they lose reddick but they could add to it as well if he does stay so it doesn't mean if reddick stays they won't go after another edge rusher i think they need another one because if they re-sign reddick he's here for a few years i don't think if they resign Hassan reddick they're not going to resign josh sweat josh sweat's going to walk brandon graham comes back for the veteran minimum veteran minimum deal and Nolan Smith needs a big year in year two, and he needs playing time and be used correctly. And most likely, I think Nolan Smith will be an outside linebacker by this year. So, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Um, we'll keep waiting. We'll keep you know marinating on this thing, and um, you know, we'll keep we'll keep going. You know, we'll keep going. Any type of rumors, I will report it regardless. Now, onto the last thing as of right now regarding contracts okay the number one player I want back on this team I've been saying it a million times because I think he fits this is the best free agent running back that's on the market right now okay and that's DeAndre Swift and his market value from from somebody sent me you know shout to Ryan Roman for this um you know on Twitter definitely follow him um 6.7 million which isn't bad Four years, $27 million. I think Miles Sanders had like a four year. I think it was like 24, 25. It was like 13 guaranteed, something like that. This is nothing. This is like a little bit more expensive than Miles Sanders, barely by what, a couple million dollars overall. I don't know how much, you know, I don't know how much Swift would get, you know, guaranteed. It would probably be between the 10 to $13 million range. Most likely probably the same thing. Um, but for an extra couple million dollars for, for DeAndre Swift that could do so much more and underutilized this past year and just hitting over a thousand yards in the second to last game of the season, it's a fucking crime. <laughs> and you know, they tried using him in the, all camp, they tried, they were using him in the past game. <laughs> He was working with the wide receivers. They get to the season. They implement him in the passing game, game by game, here and there. And then they totally just straight away from it. You don't have the running back crew, especially with Kenneth Gainwell. I feel like they got to re-sign Swift. I'm telling you, Kellen Moore, this is better than Austin Eckler. This is better than Josh Jacobs. This is better than any free agents out there. Antonio Gibson's like the, or sorry, or, or Gibson, I should say. I forgot, I keep forgetting his name from Washington. He's the only other running back that I would actually like. Uh, and free agency, really. But at the end of the day, DeAndre Swift, I'm sorry, but can cut on a dime, can change direct. I mean, it's a huge mismatch. It's a natural, pa a natural pass catcher for another weapon for a quarterback and Jalen Hurst to extend plays. And I, I, I could Im just imagine what Swift would do in a Kellen Moore type system, the way they use these running backs. And the, I mean, Man, it's a dream to see. I, I wanted this dream to come true this past year and how they would have used them a lot more. Not just use them in the first quarter, then it's Gainwell the rest of the damn game. I mean, that's why I felt like I watched, you know, uh, using Gainwell in motion, using Gainwell for short, short uh, yardage. I mean, stupid shit that they did this year, man. Uh, it's third and short, second and short, and you sub get and you sub DeAndre Swift out after a big run that he had. Like you know, I felt like that. That's really what kept the Eagles' momentum this past year. Every time they had that big run by Swift or a good first down or a good like five to eight yard run with Swift, you know, fast paced offense. Hertz got in a better rhythm offensively. I thought he did great coming off of that. But when they started to get subbing guys in and out and. I mean, I, I just, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I'll never get it. This guy, I, I, I mean, seriously, like, I don't know how half these guys even made salaries last year. I really don't. Um, but DeAndre Swift was like my was my favorite player coming up coming into this team last this last year. Okay, my was my favorite player of last season, and was so excited for him. And when we traded for him on day three, I knew, I knew that there was just, I knew he was going to have a big fucking year if he if he stayed healthy, and he didn't have a good enough year. It was a good year, statistic-wise. I mean, he should have been the second best back in the league. And I think we all know this. Um, I think he fits Kellen Moore's system tremendously. And I think that number is perfect. Uh, he's a little bit more expensive than what Miles Sanders got paid with Carolina. But Jesus, man, like, this is everything you want in a dual-threat running back to match with your quarterback. And especially when Jalen Hurts gets his speed back and can run normally and we get the old Jalen Hurts back on his feet and extends plays and 
the pre-snap motion that Kellen Moore does and things that we've been dying for, things not looking so basic and so just plain and ugly every single game. I mean, it's just nuts, but that's all I got to say, man. I mean, uh, DeAndre Swift coming back would be one of my number one, number one move right there. So um, other than that, that's, that's pretty much it. And the Son Reddick stuff, it looks like, you know, he's going to go out and do his thing and give the Eagles a number, see if the Eagles will carry out that number. And I think they I think they will carry out a number, probably probably meet in the middle with the Son Reddick. But you never know. He could get traded. You know, we'll see. And if a team is willing to give some good picks and, you know, who knows what it's going to be. Um, that the Eagles might might take advantage of. So we'll see the way it goes. And if there's a player trade involved or something like that, return back to the Eagles. We'll see what happens with that. But let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes what up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.